People ask me, what was Fort Mill like when I finished school? I said, if you were within one mile of here, you were in a cotton field. Solomon was a great person. You know, he was a slave, he could have ran away, but his word was more important to him than running away. The adults were always a part of our lives. They were always talking to us and, you know, at least telling us hello, asking us what we were up to that day, or making us a part of the community. That made it a very special place to live. Old John Jr. was a good man. We ought to have a monument standing somewhere to honor him. For some of them, he got through school that I went to school with, but he wouldn't give up on one. He would just keep on and keep on with a, a student and convince them they could do it. He didn't have to lock your doors if he got hurt. If we were out playing in the uh, yard with a bunch of other kids and got the skin knocked off of us or bloody nose or something, we didn't go home. We went to the closest house. The Springs Mills were better than any of the others around because the Colonel took care of his folks. And I worked there 37 years. It was a good experience and nice people to work. And we, we came in contact with Colonel Springs a lot. What he preached to me and my brother was that everything we have came from the, he used to say, the sweat of the brow of those people working in the mill. 50 years ago, you didn't have to go to Charlotte Rock Hill to buy anything. You could buy a man's suit or a woman's dress or anything on Main Street in Fort Mill. I can remember my granddaddy had a horse and wagon to deliver groceries in when I must have been four or five years old then. Everybody went to Main Street on like Friday afternoons and Saturdays, and all the farmers came in uh, to the town, and the town would be the Main Street was crowded. And if you went downtown on a Saturday morning, you were likely to see everybody you knew. It was a good place to catch up with a neighbor you hadn't seen all week. You couldn't believe the mass of people that were on Main Street. Fort Mill Main Street on Saturday was buzzing, if you can believe it. The, uh, the drugstores uh, were uh, where you met your friends after school. The drugstore always had good-looking gals at the soda shop. There was a lot of things that we did that uh, didn't call for money or anything, and we did go to the movies a lot. I know when it moved to um, Confederate Street, you could take a quarter and you could go get in the movie and you could buy popcorn and a drink. I didn't like it because I had to go in the back door of the movie theater, but I, you know, I realized that they had the best seats in the, uh, in the balcony. We had a wonderful community. It seemed like people were more together then than it is now. And that's the way Paradise was. This was a beautiful place. It's singing going on. And someone said it sounds like Paradise. Dr. McElhaney, he was a great character. He never had a degree in dentistry, so Jake told me, but he still pulled teeth. <laughs> you say, Miss Claire, get me so and so, and she would plug it in, and you would get him. And sometimes she'd say, Oh, she's not at home. I just saw her go in the grocery store. We could uh, get our driver's license at 14 then. I mean, I'd go down the road looking through the steering wheel like this. I couldn't even see over it. During Prohibition now, uh, nobody drank. It was not only against the law, it was a sin, capital S. You did not do that. So if anybody and everybody did take a drink, they pulled the shades and locked the door. He came in about midnight, which was uh, kind of late for me, but I met him at the door and told him he was our second president. And uh, he said, oh, and I said, yes, Jefferson Davis stayed here. So uh, being a good southern, he liked that. Now, this is going to sound funny, but for some reason, I was fascinated by outhouses. 
I mean, I lived in town. I didn't see outhouses until I went to visit them. Every night at Nims Lake was a party. It was the place to be in the summertime between World War I and World War II. I remember Nims Lake, but I was forbidden to ever go there. I never got old enough to go to Nims Lake in my mother's eyes. I drove by Nims Lake not too long ago, and I was shocked how small it was. But as a youngster, that big lake to swim across looked pretty awesome to me at the time. Fort Mill was, was a curious place. I always wanted to come back wherever I was. Fort Mill is our home, and there's eight generations of us, starting with Solomon. It was just wonderful. You go out on the street, you speak to somebody. I do that in Charlotte, and they look the other way. I bet I could walk up and down the streets in Fort Mill for two or three days and not see anything that measured up to what that was like. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. I've lived here all my life. I just felt like we had, uh, we had something really special here, and I began to realize that, you know, while I was, while I was growing up. Fort Mill, plays a very unique part in South Carolina. I think if more South Carolinians would like people in Fort Mill, it'd be a better state to live in. But I wouldn't take anything for growing up in Fort Mill and the experiences I had and the lessons I learned that stood me in good stead throughout my entire life.